let's double click on weight gain. We spoke about this previously. We spoke about the fact that uh, fat cells, particularly around the abdomen, can produce a little bit of estrogen. So there's perhaps this physiological change during menopause where the body's trying to hold on to some of that. Um, as the uh, ovarian function declines and there's less estrogen produced there. Um, and I was reading one of your papers on weight gain. I think was that 2012 or 2013? Mm. Weight gain at menopause. Yeah, sometime around then. And you kind of uh, really nicely pointed out that certainly fat distribution seems to be able to trace back at least partly to changes in hormones and, and, and menopause. But sort of total body weight, perhaps not. So can we, can we kind of... Uh, explore that area and and provide us a bit of a synopsis i guess as to what you found when you wrote that review so studies doesn't matter what country they're done in show that on average women increase their intra-abdominal fat by 20 to 40 percent through menopause um even if their weight doesn't change so we shift weight to our bellies which is a problem because that's the more sort of metabolic damaging that's the bad type fat, of fat. That's the unhealthy fat. But really well done studies that have followed women every year with body composition measurements. Um, the Swan study, the Pen Aging study, and other studies have shown that the weight gain women complain most about menopause is actually an age related weight gain creep that starts around later reproductive years and is not due to menopause per se it's it's an age-related creep as in it's not specifically due to this change it's in not hormone due to the change in level. hormones right so but then what what do we understand what is causing that creep mostly lifestyle mm -hmm. and i guess what exactly we don't know exactly what do i hypothesize your, your life changes you know the average 54 year old woman is not running around after a three-year-old or even a, you know, a 12, I mean, some still are running around after 12 and 14 year olds, but the majority of us who have had children, the, the kids are, can look after themselves by the time we're going through menopause. Um, and it's about, it's about lifestyle. It's about being less active. A lot of it's about being less active, bad food. I mean, look at, and look at the population. So we studied 7,000 women aged 18 to 39 in Australia. They're representative of the Australian population. 45% are overweight or obese. Aged 18 to 39 year old women. Fast forward 10 years, what are they going to be, you know? And so it is a whole societal health issue. It's an, it's an age-related weight gain creep that occurs. And as we get older, we also, our metabolism slows. So there's so many reasons. It's, not men it, it's mostly not menopause. Do, do women that come in to see you clinically find that hard to believe? Because I think you know, the common sort of question or comment that I get is nothing's changed. I've, I'm eating but the they, same. But it has changed. Firstly, you're older. And if we get older, our metabolism is different. And secondly, um, I think our lifestyle's changed. I mean, gosh, I've got a car that I just go near it and I can open it. I don't even have to lift the – I mean, our lives have changed. But it's we not just about accepting it because what I'm hearing from you are is that there are there are things that a woman could do to – reduce visceral fat and oh, some yeah. of those changes. I saw a patient about a year ago. She came in, she said, um, well, I need to tell you, Dr. Davis, I wasn't going to come back to this appointment. I said, oh, really? Yes, I wasn't coming back. Um, in fact, I, I was horrified. I left and I didn't want to pay the bill and I, got, I, I went and spoke to my own doctor. I said, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry if I upset you. She said, yes, because you told me I was overweight. You told me I needed to lose some weight. I actually felt quite good when I came in here. And I said, oh. And she said, 
and I've lost eight kilos and I feel fantastic. Because I went to my doctor and my doctor said, well, I didn't want to say that to you, but, you know, Dr. Davis is right. And, I mean, she was, she wasn't obese. She was overweight. And she said, I did lose the weight and it wasn't that hard. But it's not politically correct to tell somebody they're overweight. I mean, you ask me, we talk about hormones and breast cancer. Women who are overweight have a 20% increased risk of breast cancer, and if they're obese, it's 40% increased risk. The hormone therapy doesn't increase. The worst outcome study hasn't shown a 40% increased risk. So Puts it into perspective. Yeah, I, and it is not healthy. As a society, we are overweight and obese. So how do you feel about the talking about uh, being overweight being politically incorrect and what's the way of kind of navigating that and, and I think it's acknowledging forward. that it's not healthy to be overweight or obese and I think that and I say to patients don't go on some crazy diet so what about the person who pushes back and says well Dr. Davis I've heard that you can be obese and be metabolically healthy there was this sort of trend for the metabolically healthy obese person that's all gone out the window it's been disproven it's not metabolically healthy to be overweight or obese. And oh, listen, I'd, believe me, I don't think it's easy to be, you know, I'm, I'm not saying everyone should suddenly be skinny, okay? We have sociocultural factors that discriminate against people having the opportunity to be healthier, as healthy as they want to be. Sure. You know, you've got, you're a single mother with three kids. You've got to get up. You go and work in a call center all day. You get home and it's dark. You start cooking dinner. What hope if you If you have time to cook. Yeah. Could just be takeaway. And you probably just buy the cheap thing you can buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not easy. And I think it's a, a community issue. It's not an individual issue. That's why I say 45% of young women are overweight and obese. No one's being bad. No one's exhibiting bad behavior. We have to do it better as a community. Yeah. So you're not saying to blame the individual. There is you're no just saying blame. we shouldn't sweep this under the carpet. We should talk about it and say we got rid of smoking pretty well. That was a community effort. What can we do to make healthy foods more available? What can we do to make physical activity more available to people? And I, I think it's not an individual blame thing by any means. I wouldn't like anyone to interpret me as saying that. Yeah, I think some of that metabolically healthy overweight research was misrepresented because it is true that you could have two people who are both overweight but one has more visceral fat and perhaps, sure. has, perhaps has higher risk, but that's not to say the other person would not be lower risk if they lost some weight. Exactly. Okay. So if a woman is listening to this and saying, okay, this is great, I, I, I realize that I, I need to lose some weight. Um, we spoke last episode about estrogen therapy perhaps having an effect on visceral fat. Is that right? Potentially, yeah. Potentially. So it could reduce some of that sort of change in fat distribution. What else? What, what, are, what are the main things that a woman can focus on who is thinking, I've, my, my life really hasn't changed that much, but I would love to lose some weight? Um, I think a couple of things. Being physically active obviously is important, but you don't, you know, you have to jog for 20 minutes to burn off a glass of orange juice. You know, you have to do a lot of exercise. Most people can't really do enough exercise that will really burn the calories. So the, so it's really being very honest about what you put in your mouth and just changing a couple of small things. 30 years ago, we weren't drinking a couple of lattes during the day. We were just adding a bit of milk to our coffee. You have a long black coffee with a bit of milk in it. Now we have a little bit of black coffee with a lot of milk in it. Small things like that. Just changing. I just suggest people identify a couple of small things they can change and gradually drop some weight, not try to lose weight in a big hurry. There's a big conversation right now, particularly in the States around semaglutide, this GLP-1 agonist for people that really are struggling to lose weight and perhaps have um, an appetite that they can't curb. Do you see a role for, for those types of drugs to help people lose weight? 
I definitely see a very clear role for um, the weight, the new weight loss drugs that were originally developed for treating diabetes. They can be incredibly beneficial. But what for someone who's like five or six or eight or ten kilos overweight, they're much better off to change their diet and exercise a bit more to lose weight because when you do it that way, you keep it off. The problem with the injectables or the you know SGL2s, etc., is that I've seen people lose, say, five or ten kilograms on them and they stop the medication, they gain the weight again. Well, if you're only five to ten kilos over, you're probably better to just lose it naturally. For people who have become extremely overweight, they're just a godsend because you can get to the point that you just don't know where to start to lose the weight. And this, it, you know, um, the confidence building this can give people and that they can actually control their lives is amazing. So I think they're great drugs used appropriately. Mm-hmm.